If I had to give people advice based on my own journey, wow, how do I condense 26 years of being a writer into that? You know, the first thing I think is just know, know that television is not for the faint of heart. Um, I always say being the executive producer and creator of an hour-long television show is the most exhausting jo job in show business. You are like a doctor, you are always on call. I can't tell you how many family dinners I've had interrupted because an actress has a problem with the scene and a rewrite needs to be done on a Sunday evening and I go to my computer and I do it. Or, you know, I'm, I'm there at seven o'clock in the morning to see a rehearsal for, for a scene to make sure that, you know, the director and the actors get the tone right and then I run home and take a shower, then I'm back at my computer at 8.30 to start writing scenes before the writing staff gets there at 10. I work with them until lunchtime. Then at my lunchtime, I'm actually watching a cut. So I, that takes me to 2.30, then I'm back with the writers for a couple hours. Then I have a meeting with the network about notes on, on the next script that's shooting. And you know, sometime around 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, I stumble out of there completely exhausted. And people call me and interrupt me at home and say, God, you have such a glamorous life, and I laugh. So that is kind of the insight into my existence on a TV show. And, you know, film is really hard because the, they don't have to make a certain amount of films every year. Television, you are kind of guaranteed work. Every year you're in a competition with other pilots to get picked up, you know, to have your series go. And, and there will be work. And you, you know that there will be a certain amount of projects going. And the thing that's great is that um, after many years of doing television, I worked very hard and wrote a lot, and my words have gone out to millions of people. That's really cool. But when I hear of like people, they finish their movie and then they can, you know, they worked for about four months on their movie and then they went to Hawaii, I'm like, that sounds nice. And I didn't get to do that. You know, we had two weeks off every May, and then I would get about five days off every Christmas, but I was always writing over my Christmas break. And it was, it was constant. So that's my big thing is that it's not like, oh, you just write a pilot and then they give you some money and you win an award and oh, isn't that lovely. It is the highest paid factory work in the world. And there's a lot to recommend it. You know, I love the fact that I really got to work with amazing actors and that I got to, to work on my craft on a regular basis. But it's, it's good to have some endurance. And I think that's some of the things you always want to share with people is take the attitude that you're going to work hard. It's not like, you know, features where you can do a feature and then have a few months off. And then usually the people who do features, their big concern is, oh God, how do I get my next project going? So, you know, there are things to recommend both industries, but uh, TV, you know, be, be prepared to work if you get into it. I, uh, my second job in show business was the Golden Girls. And I must say, as the years go on, I enjoy that credit more and more on my old resume. Um, I loved all of those women. Sadly, we've lost three of them. Betty is still magnificently around, doing amazing work at the age of, I think she's, oh my God, she's 93. She's 93 and still has more energy than I do, which is both amazing and depressing. Um, and yeah, I, I got to be a part of television history with that show. And certainly we made some noise with Desperate Housewives. So just maybe a touch. Um, and I got to meet people like Eva Longoria, who came in as just an actress off the street, and she's become, you know, her own little cottage in industry. So, uh, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to have done some stuff that's gotten seen. And I've had my share of projects that, you know, didn't go well. So, and, and interestingly enough, it was the stuff that didn't go well that I learned the most from. You know, I, I you know, one thing I would always want to stress to people is, um, be proud of your failures, because if you're paying attention, that's the stuff you'll learn from. You know, when it goes wrong, then you can take a step back and go, okay, where did, where was that left turn I made? And, uh, and that was the cool thing about Desperate is I had just failed enough that I was ready for some success. And then, then I kind of um, overhit the mark a little bit. But, uh, you know, it's, it is fun at, at this age I'm at, I'm 53, to go, okay, I've, I've had my failures, I've had some successes, I can now pay my bills, which is lovely. But I'm also ready for more adventures, so I'm still young enough to kind of uh, enjoy the, the foundation that I built and hope, hope to, to, to accomplish more. So I'm at a good place, but always so very happy to talk about the beginning when it was all so new and exciting. Start to understand what good storytelling is. I think that for all my experience and, and the, some of the success I've received, you know, I, I'm sometimes too close to the material. I rely on my producers 
to be good arbiters of storytelling. Um, and sometimes it can just be a gut reaction. Do you like what you're reading? Do you care about the characters? Are the events surprising in a good way? Um, you know, it can just be all the basic questions of storytelling. But if, if a producer can't help me because they're not good with story, then they should be quiet and, and, then, and let other people who are better at it. So, so I guess the second part of that sentence would be know what you're good at. Because sometimes producers are just good at getting talented people and bringing them together and then maybe their thing is to just step away. But I love anyone who, who can give me cogent insightful notes about the work I'm doing you know I'll, I'll take help wherever I can get it from so you know I would I love producers who know how to, to tell a terrific tale and if they can help me do it fantastic there, there's a saying that I, I totally adhere to which is both triumph and failure are both imposters and to me what that that old quote means is that you can have worked on a big hit but that doesn't really mean you know more than everyone else in the industry. And you can have had a project just die a hideous death and people hate it, but that actually doesn't mean that you're not without talent or ability. Sometimes the pieces come together and sometimes they don't. So, so who you are as an artist, and indeed perhaps as a human being, is really defined by the totality of the journey. And so that's kind of how I look at it is I get up every day with the intention of doing the best work I can. And hopefully I will have accomplished something that people will connect to. But sometimes you can create a, a great piece of art that people don't get for years and years and years. It's a Wonderful Life got very mixed reviews. And then it wasn't until um, you know the, the movie started playing on television that people started kind of understanding it. You know, People weren't in the, the mood for a Christmas movie with dark themes. Uh, right after the war. It was in the 1950s that it started to become a beloved classic. And I always think, how weird must that have been for Frank Capri? He created this brilliant movie, but people didn't embrace it at first. And that's the thing you always want to share with young people starting out, be they writers or directors or actors, is that as long as you're satisfied with the work, that's really what counts. And you may not um, you know, get to experience massive success where everyone's you know, telling you how great you are at first, but just you know, keep plugging away, and if you're doing something right, it will come. And then you know, and I was very lucky at the age of 42 to have Desperate Housewives take off. Um, but I had been unemployed for the three years prior, so you know, that's that's Hollywood too, which is you're a failure, you're a failure, you're a failure until you're an overnight success. You know.